Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. Ich war seit Wochen auf diesen Tag und tanz vor Freude über den Asphalt. Als wär's sein Rhythmus, als gäb sein Lied. Hello and welcome to Gegenpressing, the Bundesliga podcast. I'm Manu Feit, he's Stefan Bienkowski. And Stefan, Bundesliga is back. How did you enjoy match day 16? I almost said 18, but it's of 16, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I took in the Friday game, uh, which... Despite doing his best to put me to sleep, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, felt like half the Bayern and Leipzig players were sleeping. Uh, the games on Saturday were nuts. And I actually watched the Dortmund game on my phone whilst driving across the country, which I could, I should really should not recommend to anyone because it's quite dangerous. But I had it kind of propped up uh, on, above my gear stick. And I watched the first half in full, and in the second half, just listening mostly to the commentary, and it's just bonkers. I had to rewatch it all again when I got home that day. Uh, but, you know, same old, same old Bundesliga, just absolute mayhem, um, and that's why we love it. If I cor- count as correct, we had 41 goals this match day? I think that's correct, yeah. Wow. Okay, that's that's bonkers. That's like more than four goals a game. Um, <laughs> um, that's it's it, it's been an absolutely insane match day. I mean, we had some what I call hockey results in there, including that last one on Sunday. Um, and the crazy thing about this is, Stefan, we're going. It's it's going to keep straight going. We're recording this on Monday, Tuesday. We're seeing match day seventeen. Um, they're rounding up uh, the Hinrunde. Right, the first half of the season is co- will be complete with match day seventeen, and then we're going into the Rückrunde um, on the weekend, finally. But yeah, I mean, it's like it's back to back, so we're doing things a little bit different this week, um, is what I'm saying. And we're going to have sort of a recap preview show merged into one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe it, right? <laughs> yeah. Basically, we don't have time to record a review of the ma- the last match day and a preview of the next one, so we're going to throw them both together in this episode, and hopefully people get uh, a bit of both. Yeah, yeah, and then, like, obviously you're getting the the regular news each show midweek behind the paywall if you're a subscriber. Uh, the same for the transfer show, that will be behind the paywall. And then, of course, we're going to do the preview show for, the, for match day 18 uh, once this midweek fixture list has been completed and um, so yeah we have lots to discuss today um, as we always do so we should jump into it right after this break this episode of the gig pressing podcast is brought to you by bet online bet online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season everything from nfl playoffs to pro and college basketball ufc mma and more you'll always find the latest odds team matchup info player news, and game trends at BetOnline. With live betting options, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable, BetOnline is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite leagues and events. Head to, head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and receive 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEF, B-L-E-A-V, BELIEF, to receive your rewards. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. So yeah, Stefan. So the, the, the way I think we're going to do this is the best way, and we're kind of lucky, um, that Schalke against Leipzig and Bayern against Köln are the first two games listed here. Mm. Um, on the And I always use Bundesliga.com, the official homepage from, from the DFL and the Bundesliga. Um, to to kind of go through our, our list of the um, fixtures um, for previews. So, 
Uh, this is perfect for us because it actually means we can kind of preview those two games while recapping the big match from, from Friday. Um, Schalke against Leipzig. So let's start with this one right, right away. Um, I think that Leipzig are going to keep going. They're good form here. Stefan, um, 3-0 win. Um, this, this was what I'm predicting over a Schalke side that has been really struggling. Um before we go into what we thought about the match on Friday, what's your prediction for this one? Yeah, I've kind of gone along similar lines, to be honest with you. I've gone for a 4-0 win uh, for Leipzig. Um, <clears throat> I feel like Schalke are just kind of like dead man walking almost, you know, like they, they, they just, nothing seems to go in right for them. Uh, they had a terrible, terrible return uh, to, you know, the football Um and yeah, I just I don't know. I think it was really. I think Leipzig's performance against Bayern was actually really, really interesting. Obviously, um, as the game was playing on, I found myself quite frustrated at you know the Leipzig were playing quite defensively. Uh, I thought Andre Silva was very um ex- not exposed, but he was very isolated. I actually thought he actually played a pretty good game. He strikes me as he always strikes me as a kind of a good striker who just puts in a really solid shift and the kind of guy who maybe won't score as many goals as you would expect from him. But I think fan, he's the kind of striker that fans will appreciate because he's actually a bit of a battering ram, ram up front. And I think I've made this comparison before, but he actually, when he does it well, reminds me a bit of Lewandowski in the way the defenders just kind of bounce off him. Um, but... I was quite frustrated at that, but as the game went on, I think I kind of realised that Bayern were kind of intentionally just trying to close this game down. They're trying to frustrate. They're trying to make sure no football actually got played, and both teams just kind of cancelled each other out. But I think that was actually a bit of a compliment to RB Leipzig, to be perfectly honest with you, because you know I, th- I don't think um, aside from the goal itself, which was a very kind of route one counter attack, which you know Serge Gnabry just fires across to the back post. Um, I don't think Bayern even had a shot on target in the game, which is really quite something. Um, so, yeah, I thought Leipzig played well, and I think against the lesser side, that defence would obviously do well, but obviously the attack would probably have more going for it. Um, and, yeah, that's kind of why I think there'd be, they'll make very short work of Schalke. I also feel like they were still not 100%, but after a game like that one against Bayern, that would probably get most of them up to match sharpness. Um, and I'm not actually sure if Chris Van Kunku's back yet. I don't think he is. Uh, but even without him, I still think they should have more than enough for Schalke after quite impressing relatively well against Bayern Munich. Yeah, I, I actually I was worried about um, this game, to be honest, because like Bayern Munich could have probably put an end to the title race right there and then. And um, we're now in a situation where there's three clubs right behind them, um, pretty close, right? Um, one of them, a Frankfurt side that we're probably going to talk quite a bit about later on, that look like a team that could actually do some damage in the league this year. But also, I think Leipzig, this is okay, they didn't close in the gap, right? Um, but also, they didn't make the gap go bigger. And there is, I think, a really big danger that if you come out of the winter break, we've seen it in the in the Super Cup when they when they first played each other this, this season, where they got almost shell-shocked right from the start. And that didn't happen here at all. Even when they conceded, and I, I, I was really worried when Bayern Munich scored that they would now run away with it, and they didn't. I mean, Bayern looked really pedestrian at times in this game, and I think that was also partly due to Leipzig putting in a really high work rate. Um, I think too that maybe with Nkunku and Werner being fully fit, they might win this game. Bayern seemed really vulnerable in the counter attack, Stefan. And I think there's a really big lesson there that if you hit this team, if you hit this Bayern side really quickly in transition, they almost feel really, really like there's, there just seems like a lot of space there to attack. Yeah. I think I was talking to you about this as well, but there's a really interesting uh, duel between Simican and Alfonso Davies on that <laughs> wing. And yeah. I think I said to you maybe in the second half that I was quite surprised that it was actually Simican who was the one who was really bombing forward out of the two of them. And just wanted to take a moment to, pre- to just point out that he had an- another fantastic game and 
I think he's really gone from strength to strength this season uh, as a kind of almost a wing back at times, uh, which uh-huh. is quite saying quite something because he can also play centre back, you know. Uh, he just looks so much more composed on the ball. And although he was, although he did seem to be kind of singled out at times by Bayern, I thought he did a really good job of it. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was really interesting, um, just kind of watching that Bayern defense. Um, I, it I completely agree with you that there's there was, there was certainly something um, that they could have been had. I didn't actually think Jan Sommer played a particularly outstanding game. Uh, McCann and Delict were a little. Um, well, it's not so troubling, but this this is an issue that I have with McCann, and I think I've mentioned it quite a lot in this podcast. I think he's a very good defender when he keeps his cool, but it seems at times that when he gets into a wrestling match with other strikers, he kind of reverts back to just trying to out physical or just out muscle them, and I think that's when he loses his composure, and I think that's when mistakes start to happen. It's something that Haaland used to do to him against do to him quite well, and I actually saw it in the World Cup at times as well, and. Silva just loved f- f- uh, flying into him, but I completely agree with you. If, I mean, as good as Leipzig were defensively, I actually thought Olmo, Schoberslai, and Forsberg were relatively useless in this game. Uh, it, I think there's a real drop off there when you when you when you don't have someone like Nkunku in there. Um, and I mean, I don't know what's going on with Danny Olmo right now because I didn't think he had a particularly strong World Cup. Uh, maybe still not 100% match fitness, but this is a guy who was really, really well thought of, and same for Shobislai, I suppose, to an extent. Um, and it, and I don't know why. Maybe they just have to wait. Maybe we just have to wait until someone like Nkunku moves on, and they can kind of step out of his shadow, and they get more game time, they get more ball time, uh, and they can start kind of picking up more responsibility. Because I guess in these kind of circumstances, sometimes these kind of attacking players, um, not not consciously, but almost subconsciously can kind of take their foot off the gas because they know there's someone else in that team who is the match winner, the guy who unlocks defences, so they can be a bit more pedestrian. But, uh, you know, Forsberg's always going to put... Forsberg's always going to get stuck in. Uh, but, I don't know, I felt... I did, it, seemed, it, it definitely seemed at times to me that Andrew Silva was kind of up there on his own. Uh, and, and Leipzig, you know, despite having a number of good players, and of course, as you mentioned, if Timo Werner's fit, then he makes a difference as well. But... Um, I think, yeah, I, I don't know. I think there's a there's a there's a there's a big drop off from Nkunku in that side and someone like Schoberschlei or or Danny Olmo. Yeah, me. That's why they're going after Marco Weiss. Um, for more <laughs> on that, have you have to listen to the transfer show later this week? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> just teasing one of our topics right there that felt appropriate, Stefan. Because if you do have right. some. We have some good info on that, um, but well, yeah, you have to listen to the transfer show. But um, maybe like transitioning this a little bit then to the the Bayern fixture, which is actually my match of the week um, against Köln, and I'm just really curious how Köln are going to package this Brazil result against Werder Bremen, the seven one rampage. I mean, you couldn't have picked a better top spiel if you're the Bundesliga. Yeah. <laughs> Like uh, the the offensive firepower on display there was uh, remarkable, and we ran the um, Stefan Tigges interview on Transfermarkt this weekend, right? Both on the English content side and the German content side, and I was uh, joking to one of our German colleagues that, oh, we have time to post this on Saturday because like it's not like this is going to be um, like something that's going to age anytime soon. And then my colleagues said, like, oh, well, unless he scores like four goals on the weekend, <laughs> which of course he didn't, but he still scored two. <laughs> and was probably the match of the day, my match of like the player of the match at that particular game. Um, I thought Stefan Tickers had a fantastic game, even though he was only on the field for 60 minutes and, um, you know, contributed the first, uh, contributed two directly, assisted, I think, another two or was involved in another two. He had, a, he had a storm of a game, which is uh, probably 100% because he did the interview of Transfermarkt. 100%. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, I'm really curious because like we've seen this so many times in the Bundesliga, right? A team like Köln goes on a crazy rampage and like their XG was only 2.34 for the seven goals, yeah. Stefan. And 
Now they're playing Bayern Munich. I think it's going, I mean, we're going to look at Köln and say, well, maybe they're back in form, but we've seen this so many times that teams can falter, get absolutely destroyed, and then be a completely different side the next match day. Um, that that would be Werder. But we've also seen teams be scoring six, seven goals and then just lose the next next game in, in traumatic fashion. Um, and I do think that Bayern are going to win this game 2-1. But I do think that Köln maybe will be able to conserve some of what they've shown against Bremen to make it at least a little bit interesting. What do you think? Um, this Obviously, this game came out of nowhere. Um, but I would kind of caution, restrain if I was a Cologne fan and maybe kind of getting ahead of myself just because, you know, Werder Bremen obviously looked quite terrible. And we've actually kind of seen this before with Bremen where it's either all or nothing with them, it would seem. Um, in the sense that they go all out in the first couple of minutes and it works and they score a bucket load of goals and they pick up a result and they keep climbing the table or it goes drastically wrong. The other team score early goals, which is what we saw in this game. You know, Schal- uh, Schalke Cologne had five goals within the first 36 minutes um, and Werder Bremen just completely capitulated and this is and, it, and we have seen this before from Werder Bremen. Um also, as I kind of said in the previous show, even though I did kind of um, suggest otherwise, Cologne do st- still have this remarkable ability to beat teams that they are expected to beat in the Bundesliga, even though they're not having the best season. Um, they still, I mean, I think the stat I saw was that they've only lost one game in the last maybe two seasons or something that they were odds on favourites to lose, if that makes sense. So whenever they're favourites to win games, they do tend to put a decent job, which is obviously what they did against Werder Bremen and then some. Um, but you know, I, I think, I think, um, I, I just don't think there's a huge amount of that performance that can translate over to the the, the Bayern game, who I think will still comfortably beat them. I've got Bayern to win three nil, to be honest with you. Um, but I don't think. Cologne should be really too upset about picking up or losing points at the Allianz Arena. Uh, it was great to see Tiggers get on the scoreline because, you know, I've kind of felt like he's a decent player um, and, he, and he definitely needed to kind of go pick up some game time um, it, it, one way or another. And it's great that he can do it. Also, at Dortmund, it didn't really work out for him. I still thought he looked like a decent player at Dortmund and he also did very well on their youth sides. Um, so I think he's now sitting on five goals and one assist this season for Cologne, which that's absolutely fine at this point in the season. If he can kind of double that, uh, then I'm sure Cologne will be absolutely delighted with that return for a young striker. So it's great to see him doing well, but I, I just, I just, I, I think this Bayern game is well beyond them at this point. So yeah, that's why I've gone for a three 0 win for Bayern. Mm, yeah, I, I still think this is going to be actually quite an interesting fixture, nonetheless. Um. And yeah, Tigges promised to me that uh, he didn't promise. He suggested to me that he might be able to score double digits um, this year. <laughs> he's halfway there. Good for him. He is now, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's now, I know. Uh, and I mean, it can go really quickly. He's also a profile, I think, that there isn't many of in German football, which of course means that he, with like a couple of good years, you know what could happen next. But yeah, enough of Tigges. Um Bayern Köln, that's my match of the week. Keep an eye on that. Uh, the next game is Hoffenheim against Stuttgart. Uh, these are two teams, like Hoffenheim lost to Union Berlin. And Berlin actually looked good in this game, Stefan. Glad to see them kind of rebounding of what was not a great run of form going into the break, right? And then a Stuttgart side that managed a expected 1-1 draw against Mainz. I have this go as a 1-1 draw again. Yeah, interesting. Um, I actually have the exact same result. <laughs> um, and I completely agree with you. I thought Hoffenheim looked, as expected, pretty useless against the Union Berlin. I fully expected Union to kind of come out to be kind of at the races. They've had a long enough break and they've recharged the tanks. I fully expected them to kind of uh, knock Hoffenheim over. And they did. Even though Stuttgart scored first, we have to remember that, you know, Jordan Sabatio missed from the penalty spot in, what, the 25th minute, I think. Um, I mean, Mbebu scores an outstanding goal for Hoffenheim, but it's his first goal of the season, you know. It just I know he's had injury concerns as well, but I think it just kind of shows that things just... Nothing's really clicky for Hoffenheim right now. Uh, and 
it's you know I kind of put that alongside a, a similar kind of performance for Stuttgart against Mainz and they're just two teams that I'm really not expecting much from at all right now so that's why I'm going for a 1-1 draw and it's hard to pull them apart really but that's um, yeah I just think it's going to be a draw and I, I, I'm not too sure if there's much if there's really much to take from these two teams right now <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I don't think we should dwell too long on this game either. I don't think this is going to be a must-watch for, for many people. Uh, but this next one, I'm really curious about this, Stefan. Hertha against Wolfsburg. Um, Hertha disappointed me going coming out of the break. I did not think that they would lose to Bochum and would lose in this fashion. Um, and they are going to face a Wolfsburg side that, oh boy, <laughs> 6-0 against Freiburg. I don't think anyone saw this coming. I mean... That's Wolfsburg side. I mean, I already we already spoke about this last week. That this is a Wolfsburg side that had their coach already fired, supposedly in November when uh, in October when they played Union Berlin <laughs> and lost to them. And Nico Kovac has not only survived his sacking, but he's also guiding this team up the table pretty quickly. And this is, I, I think, the six 0 win against Freiburg. That's a huge statement win and. I look at them, them now fa facing Hertha Berlin. I, I'm pretty convinced they're going to win this game easily. Um, I have it down as a 3 0, but I, I'm curious about your thoughts because you've written a little bit about, about Wolfsburg this year as well. But they look good now. Yeah, they absolutely do. I think we kind of talked about this in uh, one of the episodes last week. And I think I've made a particular point of Tom Kaminsky, who I expected a lot more from uh, him in the Roker window. And he seemed like the only player who didn't get on the scoreline for Wolfsburg. Uh, at the weekend, but they're, they're a very, very good attacking team, and I think what's happened for them uh, and Kovac is that it's just finally clicked for them at some point, he played around with the tactics uh, I think he was trying to implement a back three uh, and went to a back four and it's worked ever since then and it makes perfect sense, because you look at the lineup that they put out against Freiburg, and that team's just absolutely stacked with good attacking players um, I feel like Wimmer in particular is one who flew under the radar quite a lot or for quite a lot of people in the summer uh, but he did really well at the Bielefeld last season uh, he did even better at Austria Vienna um, you know at uh, before that uh, the, the season before and he was just crying out to move to a bigger club and he's now there and he's, he's, he's kind of played a bit part role in this team but I think he showed against Freiburg just how good he can be. Um, so, you know, they've just got, they've got, they've absolutely stacked with attacking players. Freiburg are an interesting one. I know we're not really talking about them right now. We'll, we'll talk about them maybe a bit, but I do kind of get the impression of them this season that they're very good to a point. Um, this is now like one of maybe three or four big defeats they've had this season. I think Bayern uh, turned them over. Even I think Dortmund 3 1, I think, in this uh, early in the season. Um, and I can't remember who the other team were, but I think it's another top four side that uh, beat them quite comfortably as well before the winter break. So Leipzig? I think this is just... Yeah, I think it was it Leipzig? Was the... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just feel like Christian Schreik's side, they're obviously, they're just, they're in the middle of a transition. Uh, they're very, very well in the Bundesliga, but I think we have to be a bit kind of more realistic with this team uh, and say they're very hardworking. They're a very kind of good tactical team, but... It just seems when they when they when they come up against a, a a side of a decent quality, and I would put Wolfsburg probably in the top four or five squads in the division, uh, and when they're on on song like they were the weekend there, uh, they're tremendous. Then they can really beat anyone. So I've actually gone for a two one win for them over Hertha. I've kind of <laughs> I thought gone carried away just because I still think this Hertha side are actually quite decent and they're actually better than they showed. Uh, the weekend there against Bochum, uh, but in particular, they're far better at home. So I think they'll probably give Wolfsburg a bit of a game. They're giving more of a game than Freiburg, perhaps, but yeah, I still think Wolfsburg will win this match. Mm, yeah, Wolfsburg are now sitting in that pack um, right behind Bayern Munich. There's a bunch of teams now. The, the league table has closed up a little bit um, thanks to Leipzig holding Bayern and who knows? Um, I, I'm not convinced Bayern Munich are going to go on an easy run in the second half, as many expected. Um, I think there's going to be more points lost and the field might get closed in. Who knows where Wolfsburg is going to end up in the end? Um, 
you know, they, they're definitely an interesting site to keep an eye on and one that is extremely dangerous, I think. Um, Stefan, the next match, and I feel like we'll have a lot to talk about here. The hockey score of the weekend. <laughs> Borussia the Dortmund tennis, fans the face tennis minds. Score of the, weekend. The, the tennis, <laughs> tennis score. Four uh, three is the most common ice hockey score there is for some odd yeah. reason. But um, so it's like yeah, but seven goals. The tennis, yeah, that is, it's a tennis score as well. You're definitely right. <sighs> Dortmund. Um, this is a side that cannot defend to save their lives. It's no, incapable they, they... of defending. Yeah, it's just it, impossible. Uh, and uh, yeah, I let you go. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> Say what needs to be said. <laughs> uh, I uh, I just don't even know where to go with this. Like, I I was actually on a, a show earlier on an in, a, a TV show in India, and I was asked about this, and I was saying, you know, if I was a Dortmund fan, I would completely understand them reaching for the bottle, like the whiskey bottle, watching this game because it was just. It, w it was just so Dortmund in the sense that, you know, it just encapsulates everything that's going on with this team where they're so good in an attacking sense um, and, you know, they have so many good attacking players, so many exciting young players who are so capable of doing magical things almost on their own. But structurally, tactically... Uh, that defense just continues to just kind of let them down. And I think the interesting thing is that you look at the way that Schlotterbeck kind of lost the ball for that first goal uh, and the way that Ozcan's kind of chasing shadows for uh, for that goal as well. And he did the same in a, in a goal later on in the match. And, you know, you could you could sit there and say, oh, well, you know, Schlotterbeck's having a bad season, Ozcan's having a bad season, and I have done exactly that. That's why I tweeted at the time. They, they have both been very poor, but it it it's it's something that we've seen from Dortmund for a while now, and I think it always just comes back to the fact that they're just not playing in a system that allows them to play as proper defenders like they're supposed to do. They're all kind of chasing shadows. They don't really have any cover whatsoever, uh, and on the break, they just kind of uh, just they, they they just disintegrate. And you know, we've said on the show all season that you know Dortmund will always have the limitations because they got Eden Terzic as their head coach, and he's far more of a kind of cheerleader. He's far more about. I saw someone saying, you know, vibes will only get you so far, Dortmund, and that's kind of how it does feel at times. He's he kind of it, it's it's a it's a kind of cliche that everyone kind of wants the next Jurgen Klopp that all they kind of care about is what they look like and how they perform and their personality but people always forget that Jurgen Klopp was a truly outstanding tactician and he put so much time and effort into his team's tactics um so I don't know it's it it they were I think they were actually really really lucky to go on and win this game to be honest with you and I think it would have been absolute chaos had they not um but it's it, it just goes to show what's what's what the real issues here that are in that team. Um and yeah, I don't know. I I I wish I could go on a more passionate rant than that, but I've just kinda of get to this point with Dortmund where it's just like, oh yeah, well we've we've seen it all up all before. I, I actually thought Ryerson or I know that's not you how to pronounce his name, but I thought he did quite well, uh, all things considered. Um but yeah, it 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 was it was a very kind of bittersweet victory for them against an Augsburg side by the way who I think deserve a lot of credit for being very kind of determined as well and they were very unlucky not to get a point from this what's your prediction for this Mainz game uh, mine is Dortmund will win but it will be lots of goals again I I went for a 3-2 here because I, I just can't see Dortmund not concede two goals uh, yeah I've actually gone for a 2-1 win for Dortmund in this game um, Mainz have mm -hmm. been pretty average so far um i can i also can't see Dortmund keeping a clean sheet um but no. i think after a game like that when they have that kind of a scare there's a degree of kind of it kind of it flushes at the complacency to a large extent uh, i know they still won't have mark royce back in this team but they've, they've got more enough attacking talent in that game in that team in, in that side uh, and actually yeah. my newsletter this week is on whether Dortmund actually do need to keep mark royce going into next season and how 
some of the other, the other younger uh, players, in particular Jude Bellingham, actually, I think, are kind of stepping into his role um, in his absence this season. So I think attacking-wise, they'll be fine. It's just about whether they can obviously defend against Mainz, but I don't think I don't think Mainz are the same sort of beast as Augsburg, where I've actually been quite impressed with Augsburg at points this season. I think there's a lot of mental fortitude to them um, that a side like Mainz maybe won't be able to offer. So, yeah, I'm going for a kind of tight 2-1 win for Dortmund. Mm. You're optimistic to think that they're only going to concede once, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I had some thoughts on on the Eden Terzic thing that you just mentioned there now. And like maybe this is something for one of the midweek shows, but I think we got, and while I don't mind the Rudi Völler appointment for the German national team, again, like we can reiterate this in the, in the midweek show, but I think you got a really good glimpse of how people get appo- appointed at Dortmund this week by how Hans-Joachim Watzke essentially made the Völler appointment a gut feeling decision. Um, and that I think tells you quite a bit on how things are done in Dortmund in terms of selecting people for leading roles and maybe why Dortmund are the way Dortmund is. Um, just a thought, but I, maybe this is also something that we can conserve and further explain in the midweek show for all subscribers. <laughs> um, but yeah, here we are. Uh, so the next game is um, Leverkusen against Bochum. And as good as Bochum have been, I just think that Leverkusen have been... I, I watched the Sunday game against Gladbach and yes, they did concede too, t- too late, but I, I actually never felt this result was in any doubt. I thought that Leverkusen were quite excellent uh, in the derby. And I just think that they're going to walk past Bochum, Stefan. I think they're going to win this game very easily. Like, uh, I have it down as a 4-1. Um, oh, wow. But yeah, I think, yeah, I think that Leverkusen are going to win this game easily. Yeah, I, I'm in similar mind to you, actually. I think, um, I, I I completely agree with you. I actually thought Leverkusen looked very comfortable against Gladbach. Two kind of great Stindl goals in the last, what, 10 minutes of the match. Maybe kind of skew what people maybe think when they look at the result. They might think it was a hard-fought match, but it was a game which I thought Leverkusen controlled quite well, actually. And that was without even Florian Wurtz really playing. And when he came on in the 75th minute and... Um, you know, did offer, it still looked like he's he's still kind of coming back to match sharpness, but certainly didn't miss him in this game. I thought Adley had an outstanding match. Uh, my th- I, Actually, my favourite minute, my favourite moment from the whole weekend was Mitchell Backer scoring and then for some reason doing like the cupped ear celebration, which I guess oh. you could maybe do because it's a derby, but I just thought the audacity of this guy who's had the most like inconsistent frustrating season probably of his career isn't even a guaranteed starter at Leverkusen if you speak to their fans a lot of them will tell you how much he drives them up the wall and this guy finally scores what his first goal of the season maybe his second one and he's often celebrating like he's Benzema or something like that uh which I think just summed up the absolute nonsense as the Bundesliga um and Mitchell Backer to be perfectly just... honest with you uh but yeah I think like he was he was, he was he was he was booed just moments before that, wasn't he? Like there was some 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 scene that happened, um, and he was booed. And I wasn't. I thought it was a response to that. But oh, Baka is right. a character. Baka is a character, Stefan. Like I I met him in in uh, St. Louis. He uh, he's the he speaks like a Jamaican. <laughs> I I can't like yeah he's he's a character anyway sorry I, I interrupted but I, I like I have Baka stories um for one day that I'm gonna write about but he's he's a character I tell you that <laughs> yeah I'll give you that so um <laughs> yeah no I think Leverkusen will be absolutely fine this game I've got them to win this two 0 I, I completely agree with you Bochum looked quite good last weekend I think they'll be fine uh but yeah I, I expect Leverkusen to win this one quite comfortably. Mm. Uh, so that gets us to Freiburg against Frankfurt which is your game of the week Um, the way I would describe before I let you talk about it is one team on the up one team in descendancy maybe Um, yeah I I, 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 I think I know where you're going with this Um, and I kind of um 
yeah, I, I, I mean, I kind of said this earlier in the show, don't know about Freiburg uh, and the limitations, I think, at a certain level. I think we'll probably see that again in this match. Um, I just think Frankfurt look fr- absolutely solid right now. That kind of front two of Lindstrom and Kolobolani just look like they're just so happy to stretch and pull teams apart. Uh, and that Freiburg defence, I think, will be having nightmares tonight looking forward to that game. Uh, so yeah, I've gone for a 3-1 win in this game. Um, I don't really know what else to add about Frankfurt. I mean, I, I didn't manage to catch their game the weekend, so I can't really say much to their 3-0 win over Schalke. But, um, you know, they're now wanting to second place, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I think the interesting thing about Frankfurt is, I mean, we've kind of, I'm only echoing really what we've said in recent shows, but they look very comfortable at this level. You know, they don't look like a team who... Um, have suddenly stumbled to the top of the table and, and are and are getting a nosebleed from the altitude. They look like a club that are really growing into their presence with every passing week, with every passing season. Um, and yeah, a three-one win over uh, Freiburg, which I predict would really kind of suggest that they're here to stay. I think um, at the top of the table and a top four finish for them this season would be incredible. It, it, that's funny because like we don't talk about our predictions before we do the show and I predicted a 3-1 Frankfurt win as well <laughs> so we're, we're in complete agreement here I, I did watch the game against Schalke um, and I was once again really impressed um, it just was never in doubt in my opinion they play with a clinical accuracy that's scary at times I think that there is some really strong leadership in this team by the likes of um, Götze, but also, you know, some of the younger players like Kamada or uh, Jakic, who I thought had a really good game as well. And Rapp, of course, who who seems to be the father figure almost of this entire entire squad, right? They just seem so assured of themselves. You know, when you see a team and you just know that they're going to be good because like they're so confident, um, they kind of remind me a little bit of Borussia Dortmund in the early club years. That's what they look like and feel like. They just feel like a team that no matter who they're going to play against, they feel they they have they they're not all gonna win all those games, but you get a sense that they could. Um, right? Yeah. Right? It, yeah. It doesn't matter who no, they face. Exactly where you're coming from. Right. And like I, I think, and it, this is going to be really interesting because I guess they're playing Freiburg now, right? And I think that they're going to win this game. But the the match after that, and this is the Saturday top spiel, and this is something, of course, we're going to preview later this week, is against Bayern. Right? And uh-huh. they have a history of beating Bayern. And I think they could beat Bayern. And like then it, then it gets interesting. I think that a lot of people in Frankfurt are going to get scared. Um, because... <laughs> I have a bunch of Frankfurt fans that follow me and I follow them and on Twitter and they're already sending like their response to them being second in the league was in celebration. It was like, oh God, <laughs> like where's this going to end? <laughs> <laughs> but it's almost like they're cool. in disbelief of where they are. Yeah. Well, I mean, they absolutely deserve it. They've put together a very impressive young team. They've got a very impressive head coach. Uh, they've got the fans uh, to kind of galvanize them. And it is, is, I think it's really telling that, you know, in I, I read an interview with Eden Terzic at Dortmund. Um, I, think, I think it was with The Athletic. And, and one of the main points he said was that, you know, I want to kind of make the Westfalen Stadion feel like a kind of venue again. They want to make it feel like an occasion to go to these Dortmund games. And where you have a Dortmund side that are kind of trying to forcibly relive the past and recapture that magic that the club had under Jurgen Klopp. After all this time, after all these failed attempts, they're still trying to go back to that source, and it's not working. You compare that to Frankfurt, who have just organically managed to build something similar with who... They already had the fans. They've always had the fans. They've managed to be smart and get one of the... A really impressive young head... Well, not a young head coach, but a very impressive Bundesliga head coach, who, more than anything else, is understated, uh, you know is um, very clinical with his tactics, never outspoken, never dramatic. He doesn't, Oliver Glasner doesn't beat his chest and scream at referees and make jokes in press conferences. He just comes across a very cool, calm, collected guy and he lets his team do the talking for him. 
uh, and they've got this very they've, they've managed to build a very impressive team that's kind of a good mix between uh, you know they've also got young impressive players who you know would fit into the Dortmund or the Leipzig model of you know buy young and sell on which they obviously will do eventually but they've also unlike Dortmund managed to really forge it with some actual proven uh, experienced players you know Sebastian Roda Kevin Trapp uh, even Kamada, who's only what twenty six, I think, but he's a he's a he's a he's a Bundesliga uh, senior pro, and then even someone like Mario Gotza, who's been around the block a hundred times. That's to me, uh, I completely agree with you. That to me is the kind of homage to the Jurgen Klopp Dortmund side of the past. Certainly the way they play as well, uh, and it'd be really interesting to see if they can if they can get through this Freiburg game and then cause an upset against Bayern Munich. Then that would be quite something indeed. Then yeah, then Frankfurt fans have something to worry about, I think, because <laughs> where is it going to end? Um, <laughs> um, Nineteen ninety-two, they lost the title on the last day of the season under then coach Dra- uh, Stepanovic in the most traumatic fashion imaginable, and they haven't been the same club since. It took them thirty years to get back to that sort of level. After that, um, there was times in the second division. There was times where the club was virtually bankrupt. Um, the Eagles are soaring again, and it, it yeah, it, it shows you how much damage you can do and how long it, can, it needs to repair it. Um, but I think they're actually finally getting to where they, I, I, I believe, belong. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, and I think this Frankfurt story, and I hope, you know, parts of me wants them to beat Freiburg because I don't want the story to end. I think that in... Other than Leipzig, they are Bayern's natural competitor in terms of where they are. Um, we've spoken many times about this, and maybe we're finally going to see it this year. It'd be nice. Um, but yes, so next up is Augsburg against Gladbach. Um, I had a really hard time predicting this because like, I think Augsburg actually... I think I, I'm actually kind of impressed with what Augsburg now have in terms of attack. I think they showed that quite well against, yes, a Dortmund side that can't defend. But neither can Gladbach. Um, Gladbach can't really defend either, it seems. So I put this down as a 2-2 draw in the end, Stefan. Um, I think there's goals in this, but I think it's going to end in a draw. Yeah, I mean, Augsburg actually have the worst home record in the division. Um, Having said that, though, Gladbach have the second, third worst away record in the division. So... Some of the two teams here who aren't really good at what they're looking at right now. But I actually think Augsburg, like I said earlier on about that Dortmund performance, they just have a degree of um, tenacity, which I actually think Gladbach are maybe lacking right now. Um, so I've gone for a 2-1 win for this game. Um, mm-hmm. And I just don't... I didn't get much out of Gladbach in that Leverkusen game at all, but I thought Augsburg really impressed me against Dortmund, so that's why I've given them a narrow win. Fair enough. Um, okay, so then we have one final match left. This is Werder Bremen, who got destroyed. Um, and maybe <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be doing this and go by that result. Um, but then I also looked at Union Berlin, and I thought that they were actually quite impressive. So I've given this a 2-0 Union Berlin win. Um Obviously, me now doing this means that Werder Bremen are going to completely do the opposite of the, the Köln game. Um, I want to give a shout out, by the way, to a German blog called Deichstube. Um, Deichstube is a Werder Bremen only blog. They do fantastic work on Werder Bremen. And they said in their second half preview that Werder Bremen will be doing quite well this season, but there's probably going to be three games where they're going to get absolutely demolished. Well, one down, two to go. <laughs> yeah I mean I don't expect another 6-0 thumping from this game uh, but yeah I'm in a similar I can agree with you I think Union Berlin uh, looked really quite impressive uh, at the weekend there against Hoffenheim uh, I think they've kind of got their stuff back they've, they've kind of managed to regain their composure uh, and there's no reason for me to think that they can't overcome of this Werder Bremen side. So I've gone for a 2 1 win in this game against Werder Bremen. I think it should be a good match. Mm, yeah, I think so too. Um, nicely rounds up match day 17, the conclusion of the Hinrunde. Um, yeah, 
a little bit of a longer preview slash new show. As I said, uh, this is as always in association with Get German Football News. I need to get that, bring that out there, Stefan. Um, they are um, so very kind and sharing the show, um, keeping up with our match day predictions. Um, I think ahead of match day 16, I was leading 91 to 71. Just want to point that out. Um, <laughs> and we'll see how it looks like after this latest match day. Um, but yeah, so yeah, this is our like preview show for, for match day 17. Um, in association with Get German Football News, we also do... The show is also sponsored by Bet Online. And before we wrap this up, any final thoughts? Anything that you wanna point your readers to? As you said, um, there's a newsletter coming out on Marco Reus, um, which I think should be quite interesting. Anything yeah. else you wanna plug? No, you took the words right from under my mouth, uh, out all my mouth rather. Um, yeah, my newsletter is on Marco Reus this week and what his what his future Dortmund. Uh, will be and whether he does have a future at Dortmund so uh, if you're a fan of Dortmund or Bundesliga then do give that a, a read uh, and as always you know um, we we do offer as much as we can on the Substack every week with extra podcasts and newsletters and whatever else so if you want to help support us then that's the best way to do it Absolutely and I haven't quite decided yet there's a few topics that um, I'm thinking about for this week Um I haven't really nailed it down yet, but there will be something interesting um, later this week uh, from from myself as well. So yeah, um, subscribe, check out the shows, lots of extra content, and we'll be back later this week with more Bundesliga shows, writing, etc. Until then, auf Wiedersehen. in Sicht Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube.